except it's not really great to stay up late because then you're really tired the next day when your babies wake up at 5.45 a.m. Hi, I am going to straighten my hair because I'm sick of wearing my hair up in a bun. It hurts my freaking head. I have a little time right now. I don't actually have time right now. I should be working, but I'm going to straighten my hair because it's going to take me about 10, 15 minutes. And I'm very excited because today I am going to film a video I've been looking forward to for like a month. I ordered a bunch of Halloween costumes for the kids, like a bunch. And I'm doing a main channel video where I'm dressing them up in like all the cutest like little Halloween costumes and there's some of them are really funny and I'm so excited. So I'm gonna start the process of filming that today, but I don't wanna overwhelm them and I don't want them to not enjoy the experience. So since there's so many costumes and dressing babies is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, I have a feeling it's gonna take me a few days to try to get them in all the different costumes. So we'll see how many we get to today, but I can't wait for you guys to see it whenever that video finally comes out. Tomorrow I'm supposed to film with Joey Graceffa, one of my favorite human beings on this earth. Truly, like a lot of times, I, I know I've said this before, a lot of times people ask like, oh, how is so-and-so like in real life? Like some like people I know who are famous or you know, popular YouTubers or whatever. He'll be like, oh, what's this person actually like? Joey Graceffa is genuinely one of the best people I've ever known. Like he is the sweetest, kindest, most just wonderful, lovely, perfect friend. I adore him so much. He is a, just a diamond in the rough. The diamond in the rough. He is fabulous and I'm so excited to see him because I love him so much. I haven't seen him in an extremely long time. So I'm really, really stoked about that and that's tomorrow. But today I just have a bunch of work to do around the house and uh, yeah, I'm excited to go play with my kiddos. One of Wesley's favorite things is when I'm changing him to dangle his clothes above his head. <laughs> You're the cutest! All right, time to put on costumes. What we're gonna do right now? Five M and M and ten chocolate chips. Okay. What we're gonna do right now is church up cookies. So I made these cookie dough balls two nights ago, and we're gonna church them up. So you take out some M and M's and you shove them into the cookie. You're shoved in there. Oh, you're just eating them. <laughs> so this one, we're gonna put in these chips and the M&Ms. What is this? That is caramel. Oh, I want it. Okay, let me cut up a little piece for the cookie. Caramel time. All right, should we cook wow. it, baby? Mm -hmm. Let's do it, baby. See you in 10 minutes. Wesley's eating an apple, and the way he eats apples, Corey just reminded me, is like how that character Mr. Peepers ate apples on SNL. Now, Peepers possesses a, a remarkable intelligence for. <laughs> but in slow motion. Because he eats the apple, but then he spits it out as he eats it. Big bite. Nice. Oh, okay. Good job. <laughs> Big bite, big bite. Good job, is that good? Okay, he ate one bite, that's good. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, well, I'm about to go up and do some work. But yeah, today's been a good day so far. We've tried on some Halloween costumes. We made cookies. Flynn's making a tower, but the magical cat still has not come yet today. So that's unfortunate. What? What? The magical cat. What? It didn't come yet today, I know. <gasps> Wait, did it come? Yes! Oh my. Oh, it's red! Kind of an orange red today, huh? Daddy, it's red this time. What's that? Another cat. Another cat. Is that cat magical? No. Oh, and yes, these suitcases are from my trip I just took and from when we were living at that other house. Still have been unpacked. Don't judge me. What the heck? What is that? It says, put this in warm milk and watch it change into a candy chocolate drink. And there's another thing. <gasps> wow. A burrito. A hamburger. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna try this pumpkin cocoa bomb. Okay. Yes, go for it. Whoa, let's see what it does. It's gonna My melt. don't touch it. I'm not touching it. Leave it okay. still. I'm, I, want, I want to sit here. Okay, you wanna sit there and wait? Yeah. It's going slowly. Yeah, it takes a long time. It does? How long does it take? I think 
45. 45 minutes, seconds, yeah, hours, like, days. That many? Yeah. There's a spoon if you want to stir it. Okay. It's changing. Whoa. See? It's getting changed. <gasps> Marshmallows. <laughs> that What's happen? inside? Marshmallows. That is so cool. That's what was shaking inside the special surprise is marshmallows. Oh, and chocolate. I wonder if we can taste it. Yeah. We can once it's not too hot. Oi, I want to try marshmallows. Do you like it? What do you know. think? Kind of, not really. A little I like it. A little you like it? Do you want more or are you all done? I just don't like the pumpkin of it. Yeah, me too. I like the marshmallows, but not the pumpkin of it. It's supposed to be like cinnamon. Is it like Candle? It's pretty candle tasting. <laughs> hey guys, so I'm trying to film a video and you know what's so funny is in my head I always overestimate what I'm capable of just kind of in general in life I've always done this um, which leads to me being able to do a lot of great things because I overestimate what I can do and then Somehow some of it actually works out and a lot of it doesn't but I always think like oh I can film that in 23 minutes oh, I can film that video in an hour. I can get four videos in today. You know, it's true I can film a video in 20 20, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour. That is accurate. However, that's not all that goes into filming a video and that's the part my brain chooses to not remember, even though I've been doing this for over a decade. So yes, filming this video that I've set up will take me probably 20, 30 minutes. However, the setup to film the setup of a video has taken me over an hour. <laughs> I'm not complaining about my job, just so you guys know. I'm complaining about my brain and how it works and how I hate that I do that. I'll be like, oh yeah, I can get that done from four to five because it'll only take me 20 minutes. When in reality, I need the whole day Day because to set everything up and then leave room for technical difficulties, which is what I'm dealing with right now. My software isn't working stuff so to keep like restarting and reinstalling stuff. So something that will only take 20 minutes once I start filming usually ends up taking the whole day. And I just, for some reason, after doing this for what am I, how long have I been on YouTube? Like 14 years or something like that. I still always forget that part. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Maybe it's not, but okay. I think it's working now. So I'm going to try to get this thing going. Okay. I'll see you guys later. All right, they're off. Here they go. Oh, Wes is in the lead. Just barely, but oh, Maisie's catching up. Oh, there goes Maisie. Maisie's here. Oh, no, Wes is in the lead. Wes is in the lead. Maisie got distracted. Typical. She's definitely my daughter. She got very distracted. Maisie. Oh, no, Wes is going to win. Wesley against Maisie. Who's gonna win the race? Maisie. You think Maisie's gonna win? Maisie's got a Maisie got a firm lead happening right now. Wesley's catching up. You gonna win? Is he win? Oh, they turn. Detour. Oh, surprise! Plot twist. Wesley's gonna win the race. What a plot twist! I thought for sure this was gonna win. Oh, here she comes in second place. I have a lazy mom hack. If you are not a lazy mom, skip forward. If you don't like wasting things, skip forward. This is a little wasteful, but it's helpful on nights where you're really tired and um, you have twins who are really messy eaters. Here are our twins and they're eating strawberries, bananas, cheese, blueberries. They had some waffle. We also have some veggie pasta, okay? So the babies really like to throw their food down sometimes and they're just kind of messy. I mean, they're babies. These chairs, we have a very, very, very big island. We put them far from the edges, don't worry, because these chairs you strap into another chair is how these chairs work. But they can be on the ground safely and they can only be up here safely, far away from the edge and if I'm standing with them the entire time. Anyway, the point is they make a mess on the counter and it's a pain in the butt after they all go to bed to then have to pick up all the little tiny pieces of food and to wipe everything up. So I came up with a really lazy mom hack. If you can get some saran wrap on sale, put saran wrap on your counter or on your floor where your baby is. <laughs> then they throw all their food onto the saran wrap and when the spaghetti happens, all the spaghetti sauce and all the spaghetti goes all over the saran wrap and then you just ball up the saran wrap and throw it away. Now I know this is wasteful. This is not something I would do every single day. Huh, Maisie? See, Maisie's mad at me. She's like, mom, that's kind of wasteful saran wrap. You get it on sale, you get the cheap crappy kind and it's on the nights where you're feeling real lazy. It's totally worth it. It makes cleanup two seconds. It's very, very nice. Anyway, the lazy moms are gonna appreciate that hack and the other moms are gonna judge me for it. <laughs> I'm tired. Okay, yesterday I said I would talk about the twins turning one. Oh my God. It's in less than a month. Oh my God. We have to plan God. their birthday. When Flynn was this age, we knew he was obsessed with dogs. So we knew we were gonna do a dog birthday. Can reach that on the paper? 
He did. For their birthday party, we have to figure out what we're going to do. Because Flynn, it was like, he loved dogs. It was obvious we're gonna do a dog party. What kind of birthday party should we have for the babies? Your first birthday party was a dog birthday party. You have to think about things that they like. Like we had lots of dog stuff at your birthday party. So for their birthday party, it has to be stuff they like. So what kind of birthday party should they have? What kind of stuff do they like? They like quesadillas. They like quesadillas? Yeah. Flynn's having a quesadilla right now. And spaghetti. And spaghetti. Yeah. They do like spaghetti. Do you guys want a spaghetti birthday party? Spaghetti birthday is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maisie loves ducks. So I feel like ducks could be part of it, but I want to think of something that Wesley really likes. Okay, Wesley's all done. I think Maisie's all done too, so I need to wipe them up. We'll continue this conversation in a minute. Um, oh. no. You giving a massage? You giving a massage? What is she doing? Oh, are you bullying your brother? <laughs> Maisie. Well, she said, ooh, that's a massage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of questions about if the babies interact and if they play together. Yes. Um, yeah, they do. They're always together. <laughs> They're always playing together. Um, they usually just sitting next to each other playing, but they've started interacting a little bit more. They talk to each other in the morning. So Can maybe have a thing? She does have the camera. These kids are crazy! Anyway, you wanted to know, I was talking about, oh my God, I can't, I don't know what I'm saying. Their first birthday, so. I was thinking, I'm gonna make a check you want to make Sure. See, if I ever try to have any sort of conversation with anyone during the uh, room, it just doesn't exist. It doesn't happen. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, anyway, I was thinking maybe a duck theme, but I need another theme for Wesley because it can't just be ducks. Because Maisie likes ducks, but Wesley doesn't really care that much about ducks. They like spaghetti. I don't know. I don't know what we could have. What kind of birthday party should we have, guys? I want to do some sort of big fun thing with all my friends and family like we did with Flynn, but I need to start planning it now. You know, honestly, their favorite thing in the world is Flynn. We could just have a Flynn themed birthday party. And oh, just mommy. everything be about you. Mine. What? I love cake. So should we have a cake? Ah! A cake party? That's a good idea. You have to think about what kind of party you want to have because yours is coming up right after theirs. What about this party? A JoJo Siwa party? Ah! Yeah, a JoJo Siwa music? A dance party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dance party! That's a great idea. Okay, yeah, so um, any suggestions, any ideas? Because we need to do something big. It's their first birthday. I'm never having any more kids. So it's the last time I'm throwing a first birthday party for one of my kids. How about a fart party? Should we have a farting party? Yeah. Everyone just farts the whole time? It's basically what happens anyway. First birthday party is literally just for the parents and siblings if they have them because they're not gonna remember it. But I want them to be able to look back on the pictures and be like, oh look, she did a fun party for us in the videos and stuff. Um, even though they're obviously not gonna remember it. And I don't like it when people go like, well, they're not gonna remember it anyway, because, okay, that's true with everything with a baby. So what does that mean? You shouldn't do anything with them ever. You should never hug them. They're not gonna remember it anyway. But like, what a weird reason to not give a one-year-old a birthday party. Like whenever people see birthday parties that are like extravagant for a one-year-old and they go, they can't remember it anyway. I don't like that. I'm like, so you don't want us to celebrate our children and like know that we celebrated them every year because they're not gonna remember it? That's so weird. So I, I feel like people use that argument a lot when you have big parties for your kids. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I'm trying to have a conversation with you guys while they're all awake and crazy. Okay, okay, this is insanity. Uh, Eric's currently writing a feminist song over there, which is pretty awesome. And look, he's wearing Halloween pajamas. And it's 10 p.m. and we're just now making dinner. And it, I don't know that I would call it dinner. It's a salad I'm trying to recreate from a restaurant that I like and uh, Pillsbury biscuits. The restaurant that I like that made this yummy salad that I ordered the other day, they sold the salad dressing and I was like, okay, I'm buying that. So now I don't have to order from that place every time I want that salad. I can just, oops, I just put a lot on there. Here you go, madame. Literally just lettuce, like crunchy lettuce, Parmesan cheese, and this dressing. Pretty boring, but if the dressing is right, it should be good. 
It's good. Oh, it's really good. So refreshing. Hi guys. Okay, I ate the salad, ate the biscuits, delicious. And I was just reading the comments from my vlog yesterday, which is one of my favorite vlogs I've done in a while. And in the vlog, I talked about how I went to the pumpkin patch yesterday and a man saw that I was wearing my dragonfly necklace and he made a comment about how the dragonfly was hanging just in the right place and then like proceeded to look at my boobs. And I thought it was really inappropriate and uncomfortable. Anyway, I was reading the comments and I wanted to talk about a couple of them. Okay, a lot of people are giving me suggestions on things to say in response to men who make me feel uncomfortable and say uncomfortable things to me. And a boundary coach suggested say, hmm, what an odd thing to say out loud. Um, and another person said, which I don't think I'd be bold enough to say something like that. You could say something to be, that forces them to be accountable. Like that is a weird thing to say. And it provides them an opportunity to explain what they meant. And that reminded me of in therapy, I have learned that in relationships, if there's an argument or disagreement, or if you get your feelings hurt, instead of assuming like, oh, this person was trying to hurt me, or I can't believe they said it to me, this is what they meant by that. You ask, what did you mean by that? And that way they can explain what they meant by the thing that was hurtful to you and then maybe you can find out that wasn't their intentions if they say something and you just like never assume you know what the other person means by what they say so if someone says something that you don't like instead of just getting mad and fighting back sometimes it's um, good to say what did you mean by that and I was like oh I don't think I'd be bold enough to be like what a strange thing for you to say to me I don't think I'd be bold enough to say that to someone like for example in that scenario I was in but I do think I could have had the confidence to say what do you mean by that because that forces then them to explain themselves because maybe he did just mean like he liked the necklace so your advice that you guys gave me there are a lot of comments that were like make them kind of be accountable for what they say by saying like that's a strange thing to say or what a weird thing to say um it reminded me that in therapy i've learned to ask what did you mean by that because that's not a threatening question that's not a sassy question it's just a question like oh what did you mean by that and i think i i could have been brave enough to ask him that so now i have that in my back pocket thanks to you guys because i've only thought to ever ask that question in like relationship issues not in like a confrontation with like a man who's trying to make me uncomfortable that's good because then whenever a guy says something creepy to me I can just be like what did you mean by that and basically make them say like oh I was being freaking creepy this was the other thing I want to talk about let's talk about boobs guys we're gonna talk about boobs right now before I go to bed Beth said I'm so sorry that happened to you I know how you feel I have big boobs and the amount of times I've caught men just staring at them is ridiculous it makes me so uncomfortable my mom caught a man staring at my chest and almost slapped him down I hope you're okay your feelings and concerns are valid I'm so sorry that happens to you Beth that must make you feel so violated that is so frustrating and I've been wanting to talk about this for a while on my vlogs and I just keep forgetting but I have no boobs now since <laughs> I had the twins and I'm pumped constantly and I breastfed Flynn for so long and um, my boobs just went through it. So now I don't have any boobs anymore really. I will say like, I think big boobs are great and I had bigger boobs and thought those were great. I've had gigantic boobs after I gave birth to my kids, all of them. They were like double D moments, like very big for me. And I've had just like, you know, C cup most of my adult life and then now very much an A cup. <laughs> In case any of you guys were wondering. <laughs> the reason I'm bringing this up is because as much as I love having bigger boobs, having small boobs is really great because one, I feel like I can kind of wear anything and I could go without wearing a bra, which I could never do that in the past. Like I always had to wear a bra, but now it's like, I don't need a bra really most of the time, which is really nice. But this is the bigger reason why not having boobs is so nice. That what you just said, that is such an issue. There are, there are shirts and tank tops that I have right now that I wear and you see no cleavage at all, right? But I would wear the exact same same tank tops, exact same clothes. When I had boobs, there were guys who would say to me, you look slutty in that shirt. Why are you showing it all off like that? You're dressed very inappropriately. I have had men speak that way to me about my boobs when I wasn't wearing anything provocative. I was just wearing clothes that like now I wear and you know, I don't have cleavage in them because I don't have boobs, but it's the exact same shirts. It made me realize now that I have small boobs, like, oh my gosh, I was shamed so often for literally just existing in my body, like just for having boobs. And it was wasn't in a complimentary way. The people who have said that to me in the past, it was like a very shameful, like shaming my body type of way. Like that's disgusting. Like why are you trying to look like a slut for other people? Like very much directed at me, like that, that how I was dressing was inappropriate when I was literally just wearing clothes that like human beings wear. And who cares if it was provocative outfit? Like is my body, I could wear what I want, but it, it wasn't. It was just literally the same outfits I wear these days. Just I had boobs then and now I don't. And it makes me so sad for all the girls with bigger boobs. Cause it's like, what are you supposed to do? It's literally your body. You're just supposed to wear a turtleneck every freaking day. And even then, like people are still gonna like say something and gawk if it's too tight. But when you don't have boobs, no one says anything because there's nothing to look at, there's nothing to see. I feel like I could literally wear a shirt that's a V-neck, like all the way down to my freaking belly button. And since I don't have cleavage right now, no one would say anything. They'd just be like, oh cool, like that looks great. But if it was back when I had boobs, people would think that I look like like slutty or whatever. I don't like that word, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I just think that's interesting. Like I just don't like that. That's so annoying. As someone who's had like a wide variety, a variety 
wide range of breast size. Like the things I've noticed over the years, like, yeah, sure, it's great to have big boobs. That's wonderful. But like at this point, I'm kind of like, it'd be nice to have boobs, but also like, it's kind of nice to not have boobs at all because I don't have to worry about that ever. Anyway, I'm going to go to bed, um, but a lot of fun things to look forward to guys. Like I just read a comment that was like, oh my gosh, the holidays are upon us. Like Colleen's about to go crazy. And like, yes, I am so excited. Halloween, like the holidays, I just did a costume video that um, is going to go up very soon that I'm really excited about. I'm excited about planning our family costumes. I'm excited about like doing a Halloween party or something. I have a Halloween show in Fresno that I'm so excited about. I've been talking to my brother about like trying to add magic tricks and stuff to the show and like spooky weird stuff. And then in November, the babies are turning one. Eric and I are going on this crazy adventure. It's my birthday. It's Corey's birthday. It's Thanksgiving. And then it's Flynn's birthday. And then it's Christmas. Like there's so much happening really, really, really soon. Not to mention like other crazy stuff that's going on in our lives. That I haven't been able to tell you guys about yet. So um, there's a lot of really fun stuff that's happening very soon. And I'm very, very excited, but I'm going to get some work done, hang out with Eric and um, try to go to bed at somewhat of a reasonable hour, but that's not going to happen because tomorrow I'm going to go see Joey and film with him and have another wonderful day with my kids. So I love you guys. I hope you had a wonderful day, wonderful night, whenever you watch this, I don't know. And I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.